This one's quite loud. Just <laughs> oh, okay, let me let me adjust the levels. <laughs> I'm glad you told me. Okay. Crashing waves, hands on my arms, grip sufficient. This is love, here this week and not something to be. And the thousands of faces look down to the sea. For the laughter like children, you tap if you please. If the fires in the sound burn revolutionary, and the hours fly by, be courageous, happy, then let the set in the sky not go and set city spots. This is love on the highway, no fear in the dark, and before the light. I think it's all to do with feeling and how they all kind of it's, it's you've got to go with like some kind of weird gut feeling that you get a great song is for some reason a great song I mean it, you could look at the, you could break it down and look at the structure and go oh that happens there there's a verse chorus you know middle eight good intro but it, it's um for some reason some songs just work and the way that songs have been produced by in a particular moment in time really works and if I were in the corner, I could feel my heart A fleeting candle, it I work, there's no need to hide Why would blitz and make us blush when it keeps us alive? Look who we sit, sipping whiskey in a sensible way to the God that song is kind of it's about um a night that i had there where it's where i met my girlfriend and we had an amazing night there and it's kind of about that feeling when you're out that night and all these amazing things that happen and then you can you know how you could go for it or you could go back to bed and and listen to the demons in your head and, and all the negative things, or you can just be in that moment and, and love it and wanting that never to end, but then waking up in the day and realising it has ended, but it's not the end of the world because you can carry on. Although there is change from our embers to sleep When the daylight arrives we are swept off our feet In a prodigal hour conspire our retreat to the rivers we forge and a castle I keep fire and illusion and don't let me sleep Give me toes in our trouble and tease and leave I want to live through and in a sea What I see is the love on the highway Not fear, not fear, not fear podcast where we bring you stories about creativity and inspiration. I'm Anson Mount. I'm Brandon Edgens. And today I'll be sharing an interview with 32-year-old Awan Rayon. Awan is a very talented actor from Cardiff, Wales. Most people know him from his turn as Ramsay Bolton in the hit TV series Game of Thrones. Did that, you watch Game of Thrones? That horrible, horrible human being in Game of Thrones. I've heard. I, I, haven't, I haven't watched it, and now I kind of don't want to because I actually like Awan. Yeah, you know, I, I, I my first uh, I, maybe it's most people's first encounter with him, you know, uh, on the show, and yeah, it's, it, that show ruined two people's reputations. Who was the guy that played? Uh, oh, you wouldn't know. I wouldn't. Know. The, the little kid King, like he had to quit because he was such a villain that he was getting it, you know, 
on the street, <laughs> you know, and it's like, this isn't worth it. But yeah, no, he, he plays uh, the worst of the worst. Well, recently he also played my little brother in a TV show called The Inhumans. But what most people don't know about A1 is that he is also a tremendously gifted songwriter. He played me three different songs for this interview, and I'm actually going to play them in reverse order because he didn't show up thinking about sharing his journey. He just was playing the first song on his mind, which was the one he was currently working on. And then as he dipped into his repertoire, he went back in time. And it occurred to me later that these songs are a kind of portrait of a young man growing into a fully developed artist and human being. At least that's my theory. The first song you already heard at the top of the episode is the title track off of Awan's album, Dinard, and it's about meeting his girlfriend, Zoe. She visited Hawaii a couple of times while we were shooting there, and I have to say, to meet Zoe is to love Zoe. My fiance Dara referred to her at different times as a, a breath of fresh air and as a pistol. But Zoe's a hard one to describe, so I asked Awan to do it, and to little avail. Is there a story that you have, any story that about Zoe that uh, ex- explains the vivacious spirit that she has? <laughs> I, I just think you have to meet her to, I, I, I wouldn't want to tell any stories in case I get into trouble. <laughs> She's my hero, but I'm also petrified of her. I am petrified to within an inch of my life. Don't, shouldn't you be here? She here? She uh, here. No, um, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. I just think from the moment I met her, I was like, I think I, I think the best way to describe her is the first time I met her, and um, she was. Uh, we were at the, the Dinar Film Festival, and um, and we happened to be next to each other. Watched the like the award ceremony, and we happened to be our film and their film was sat in the front row next to each other, and um, and the director of her film was. Um, sort of like, oh, very nice to meet you. Uh, you know, and I was like, oh, I stood up, shook her hand, was like, hello, you know. And then she's like, this is Zoe from my film. And then, uh, and then Zoe just sort of looks at me and went, oh, I bet I have to st- I better get up then, should I? And I was like, I don't, I don't mind. But it was like, I like this girl. I like her. She's, you know, she called? said, oh, I should back up? No, she was like, I, oh, I suppose I should stand up then oh. to, take, to introduce herself to me, which I was <laughs> It was hilarious. And from that moment on, I, I liked her. It was just like, yeah, because everyone at those things that can be, you know, everyone's got a game plan and she just did not. And I liked that. And it was, uh, and, uh, and then the rest is history. So I, and then I won her back. I won her by uh, downing a quadruple whiskey, the single malt that she bought me, which, uh, which I'm not proud of. But um, yeah, she, she bought me that. And then I downed it in front of her and she couldn't believe her eyes. So we both did something negative, which ended up being something incredibly positive, which I think is a great... Great way of looking at the world. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> when my girlfriend, Dara, was here, she fell in love with Zoe. Oh, did she? Oh, yeah. She called her a pistol. <laughs> or maybe that was my word. I'm not sure. But, but we love Zoe. She's great. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, she is. She's amazing. And then, but she's making it very difficult for me to write songs, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm too happy. <laughs> That's great. But I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm really lucky. I've got. I'm in a a, a great relationship, and um, you know, I'm kind of I'm doing what what I've uh, always dreamed of doing, um, and I'm getting paid to do it, um, and it's great, you know. Uh, so yeah, it's hard to to find melancholy in girlfriends dumping you and all, you know, all that kind of stuff is becomes a thing of the past. And that, and then it's like, well, what do I write about now? I, I don't really, or, you know, or unrequited love and all that stuff. And it, and, um, so yeah, and, and I'm not really one for writing your out and out love song. Sit down next to me and put it back. We'll find it in the end. Two faces we both understand. Here's my heart. I'll race you to the start Find the rules and tear them apart You cross your toes, I cross my heart Here's the start Hold ye Hold ye And let the icebergs melt I 
realize that growing up is a partner of growing old. Not hours past, no diplomats. I am so. And now we're on our knees, back for mercy, back for relief. But love can bring such misery, such relief. It's, it's kind of a, uh, a sequel to Dinard, really. But it's kind of like looking down the barrel, where am I going in a relationship, you know? And, and also it's, it's the next stage. Uh, and it's how all the excitement of that first night moves into something that's real and that's something that's part of your life, I guess. And, and it's kind of wanting to put that feeling back in order to be able to find it again. But we will be able to do that. And it's much more of a positive song in that sense. And it's about learning what uh, growing up and being in love is, I guess. Forever in this peace I will always love you the way That I was grown to understand from the grave Put it back, put it back, put it back I love that song. I re- really, really do. Those lyrics, sit down next to me and put it back. We'll find it again. Two faces we both understand. Here's my hand. That is a perfect description of patience or of seeing the beauty in, in the long term. Uh, and then late, later on, that th- those lyrics, I realized that growing up as a partner of growing old that that's just fantastic what do you think you know writing about you know uh young love and heartache and that kind of stuff is easy because that's been set we, we've been we grew up hearing that there's a ready-made template for that you know you can you can easily kind of plug into that and generate your own but this is about something else this is it's it, you have to you have to dig deeper you have to search you have to think harder Mm-hmm. Um, and really adapt yourself to this new uh, endeavor. Something which, other than you. <laughs> yeah, something other than you, and, and, and something that's harder to, to something that's going to be something that's going to be a much bigger life change. Because now you're and now it's 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 really about commitment. You get to that point where it's about sharing your life with somebody forever, and then that as you get older, forever means something different. Given this conversation about larger ideas that we were having, I didn't want to just talk to Awan about individual songs. I actually wanted to ask him about the process of putting together a larger body of work. In other words, the dwindling art of the complete album. Hmm. I think in terms of my own music, I always wanted to do an album because I always feel like an album is a whole, it's, it's, it's a piece of work. It's not just like an EP where you're just putting some tunes together. Um, so you've got, a whole collection of work that's supposed to be listened to together. And I remember when we were trying to, when I was recording the album and putting it all together, <clears throat> it was just, uh, it was kind of, right, where right, where does this song go? And, and I, it was all up to me. And I had an order in my mind and it was like, this is how, where I wanted to go. I wanted to be like this. And then it was just something just not right about it. And I knew it wasn't right. I just didn't know how to explain it. The night before we were going to go to master it, and that's it, you know, once it's mastered, it's done. And um, I just couldn't sleep because so I was just thinking, what, what isn't right about this? I've got to get this right, otherwise I'm going to regret this forever. And uh, and then it, and then I just moved a couple of songs in my head and it just worked and it was like, that's it, that's it. And then when, when we put it all together, it just felt right, whereas it didn't before, which is really interesting. Are there particular albums that, that you look at that you go, wow, okay, beginning to middle to end that's a, not only a great group of songs but that is a well put together album I, th- I mean okay computers is a great example it's flawless from the beginning it just has this amazing flow all the way through and um i think that's you know that album was had so much impact on me when i first listened to it because i was young when that came out i was 12 maybe and I, you know it was like what is this um and then I guess things, when you listen to a lot of Dylan albums, you've got that, 
you've got you know desire yeah it's got that feeling it has a real rhythm all the way through but then it you know it and you go into like Joey, which is like this really sort of epic um, song, and then you know it, uh, it's just it just all the way through it changes. I think I think he's the master of it. He was always the master of it. You could just you just want to listen to it all the way through. I hate it when someone turns off one of his records. It's like whoa, 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 what are you doing? But that's become a thing that me, people do now in music. Like I've, I was out with these, these young kids, they were you know he was like eighteen or whatever, and they weren't even listening to the whole song. They were just putting YouTube listens like half a song and then changing it it's like what are you doing man you haven't even listened to the whole song what's the point in these people wasting their time like, you know just so you can flick through it it's worse than flicking television that like, it's sacrilege I think we're, we are even though I mean I, I, things like Twitter are a great source of news but on the other hand the negative impact of that is that you because of the nature of it you follow what you're interested in and, and you and you tend to you don't hear the other side of the argument because you disagree with it. And that creates like a divide between people. Whereas before you could sit in a bar and you, or you could have friends or you could have dinner party or whatever. And there's discourse and people are disagreeing with each other. And, <clears throat> and, it, and it's fine to do that. And then you have an argument about it and you go, well, you know, very good. I respect your opinion. And then you carry on with your night, but that doesn't exist anymore. Almost. It's like people hate the other side. It's this real, like, ah, it's just against them all the time and um, I don't think it's very useful. And I think social media has a massive, massive part to play in that in society because you only see that one side of the, the argument. It's not balanced. You don't get to see, you know, I don't read uh, right-wing newspapers, which I probably should in order to, to make what I'm just saying now not hypocritical, but you see, I am part of the problem. <laughs> and, it, and, and it was observing that in myself that made me want to write this song. song is kind of it's about um observing the world and how we're all becoming so inward into our machines and the devices that we have um and how we almost choose to ignore certain things that are actually amazing and going on in the world um and how we and it's also that entitlement and i'm including myself in this problem i'm not you know it's i'm absolutely someone who uses the smartphone and all that um, but it, it's just an observation into how it's easier to be lost in in there than it is to be out in the real world nowadays. Um, and I think that's something that we probably need to address in general because 
there's going to be a point where everyone's so lost in it that that people are going to forget to communicate. Work my fingers to the Shove my fingers down my throat Always waiting for the answer Things we do Time is better moving backwards away from you I'm lost in you I'm lost in you I'm lost in you do you find yourself turning to things like that to th sort of like concerns outside of you in your own world? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's kind of yeah, because I mean, I'm and I think as you get older you become more aware of yourself and you and you start to sort of I I don't know, accept yourself and not see the flaws in yourself as um as such a negative thing and it's something that you have to embrace and you have to let it be a part of you. So then I'm being influenced now by things that I feel strongly about. But then that's a really difficult thing to write about because you don't want to be there, you know, just blah, blah, you know, giving it all that. And and I don't think people necessarily want to listen to that all the time. It's trying to do it through being in that first person and, and being part of it as opposed to being standing outside of it going, oh, look at all that. When I think right, well, that that's, the, yeah, and that's what I was going to say is that that's what's interesting about the song is you're not playing it from the subject is, of the song is not from one side of of the current political divide you're actually looking at the divide that's what's interesting yeah i think that's it it's kind of going into it as opposed to looking at it from outside and being like well, what what is this you know and the what we would call a problem to uh, in order to find out what's wrong with it and i think that might be something useful to do yeah well th that's a, that's a thing of a song and a poem, to a large extent, is it is a window into a first-person account. And a lot of people, I think, when they lose personal day-to-day -day struggle, oh, I can't pay my rent, oh, I got dumped, they lose that inspiration because they lose the... or they, they don't employ imagination to, to create that point of view maybe out of parable. Mm. And... I think that's a really interesting transition you're talking about going through. Yeah, I guess it's it's kind of um, it's just happened whether I like it or not, really. Just <laughs> because I, 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 yeah, I mean, like my life's changed. My and and my reasons for writing music has changed. It's something that I'm always going to do because I can't help it, and I love playing the guitar, and I find it incredibly therapeutic to just sit and sing. But um, what's been great is because I'm sort of earning money as an actor it, it, it that's occupied that space in my life and it means the music can be be, be you know what um what I love doing and it has no no one's regulating it I don't have to make money out of it I don't have to um I don't have to go to the studio I don't have to do anything I do it whenever I want and that's an amazing thing um especially I mean as you know the pressures of of this game and of the acting game and how you know, uncertain it is and how scary it can be, but to not have that sort of blemish music is uh, is really special. So I can really enjoy playing. Um, but I mean, there's, there's such different things. And I, I used to manage it so much better. I, I really think I did, but I don't know whether that's... That with time I've kind of given in more to the fact that this is now my career and maybe I've admitted it to myself that mm. I'm not going to be a rock star. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> Always a difficult moment. Yeah, I know. It's very <laughs> tough for me to realise that. I had wept, wept for days. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I guess then, and, and our music is becoming a much more personal thing. So it's kind of, it's less about watch me play and it's more about I just need to do this. And that, I think, is the difference between the immature and the mature artist. A1 said earlier that he writes songs for totally different reasons than when he began. And that really rang true with me because a few years ago, I applied to a, a working group called the, the Actors Center. And they asked me to describe my reasons for acting. And I realized in that moment that those reasons had probably changed because I became totally tongue-tied. All I know 
is that any sane person would have quit a long time ago. But but really, it just came down to what Awan said. Through all the ups and downs and the moments of doubt and the, the months on the road, my feet had to walk on those boards for some reason that I honestly could not articulate. I think there's a, a kind of acceptance of what you are, you know, the whether it's not being a rock star, <laughs> which we all have to realize at some point. I haven't realized that yet. <laughs> right. I'm going to do it. But I don't know, self-involvement, while it provides immediate subject matter for the younger artist, it, it eventually fades because, to be honest, most of us are not all that interesting, and we, we discover that eventually. Um, and you're going to have to look outside of yourself or you'll become insane or a jerk. And the only thing forcing you to do that, I think, is the need to, to do what it is that you do. And so you go looking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it starts off as a thoughtless compulsion when you're younger you know it's, it's in some ways i mean th- that engine's always there even when you're oh sure when, when you when you're when you're young but i mean it, it, i don't I'm, it's not to say that this whole that as you get older it all just becomes a higher stakes game of justify your existence no it's the same it's the same engine yeah definitely. it's the same engine but it, now it needs new fuel yeah absolutely right. um but it you know it's it's interesting that a1 we're talking about his what he's decided as his hobby and that he feels he's, he's freed from all of that external noise at the outset. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the definition of, of being an amateur. And I know that has kind of like, like a, you know, uh, it shouldn't have a negative connotation. It does. No, it's from a, it's the, 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 the it's root. Love, yeah. Yeah. The root of that is the, it's the middle, middle French word for love. Mm-hmm. Amatore. And, 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 it, and it's wonderful to not to have, you know, the pressures of, um, of either success or, or or financial stability, become untethered from that thing that made you happy, because those things can end up ruining the thing that makes you happy. You know, I know so many people who who uh, decided very conscientiously not to do the thing they were really good at because they knew there was an aspect to it that was going to ruin their love of that thing. You know, life at that inter- especially at the intersection of art and commerce, can get rough, and it can make you wonder why you're doing it, and it can uh, it can really cor- corrupt the whole process. I've, and I've also found that it's 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 great to have something outside of your career art if you're an artist that just allows you to to keep going. Oh yeah, because it can be a lot of logistics and time and difficulty between gigs sometimes and you can't just stop creating mm-hmm. you'll go nuts if you if you really are an artist if you're not then you you'll probably be fine with jogging Malibu Canyon and and <laughs> hanging out until the next gig but you got to keep you got to keep creating yeah are these flags are seen that these faces are seen and the fire in the corner can feel my heart A fleeting candle it hour There's no need to hide While we blitz the niggas' blood So when it keeps us alive <laughs> Can we sit, sipping whiskey In the same simple way to the garden the Well is produced, recorded, and edited by Brandon Edgens and myself, Anson Mount. Theme music by Jonathan Myberg. Thanks for this episode of The Well go out to Jim Ingle, Julia Pernicone, Zoe Grisdale, and of course to Awan Rayon for taking the time to sit down and play some tunes for us. You can find out more about him and his music at awanrayon.com. And if you don't know how to spell it, that's okay. We'll list it on our website, thewellpod.com. That's thewellpod.com. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to us. You can do it via email or hitting the links to iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you download your podcasts. And if you really like us, give us a review. We'd appreciate it. Thanks, and have a great week. Although weather has changed from our embers to sleep When the daylight arrives, we are swept off our feet In a prodigal hour, conspire our retreat To the rivers we forge and a castle I give me fire and illusion And don't let me sleep Give me toes in our trouble And tease and leave for my one
gradually hear that D getting flat. There we go. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Thanks, man. That's great.